SpaceX lost moon lander contract. NASA put SpaceX on notice. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me. Today we're gonna to be talking about SpaceX and Artemis and the government and all kinds of good stuff. It looks like SpaceX lost the exclusivity to that lunar lander contract. That is a really big deal, guys. This is something that we need to talk about because there is, I would say, broader implications for this happening. And I wanna get into some of this stuff with you. I was reading a couple of articles. I threw them together. Some of them got it right, some of them didn't. And hopefully what I put together here was right. And then of course, I'll give you my commentary at the end. I wanna know what you think. That's more important, down below. Right down here in the comment area. If you don't want to put anything down there because you're shy, I understand. Put an emoji down there. I'm okay with that. That's fine. Also, if you enjoy this content, even the least, throw it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. If you are subscribed, thank you. I appreciate that. Share the video. Share the channel with your friends, family, Reddit, Facebook, wherever you traverse the web. That would be awesome. Help grow the channel. Also, if you want to give back to the channel, there's a little thanks button down there. You can click on that, give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. The video is still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you want more SpaceX Starlink specific content, I'll put a link here. Don't click on it yet. Right here, when you're done watching this video, go back to there, click on that, and you'll see about almost 600 videos on SpaceX Starlink. A lot of helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what I have to do, what to buy, what not to buy, and of course the why behind all of it because this channel has always been and always will be about the why. Not just the how, the why. I think why is more important in my personal opinion. Anyways, NASA pulls the trigger. Moon lander contract reopened. NASA has announced that it is reopening the contract for the Artemis III human lunar lander, the vehicle originally awarded solely to SpaceX in 2021. The decision comes amid concerns about the company's timeline and readiness, signaling that the agency is no longer willing to wait indefinitely. What SpaceX was tasked to do. In 2021, SpaceX was selected to provide the Starship HLS, or Human Landing System, to transport astronauts from lunar orbit to the moon's surface. The initial schedule targeted a 2027 crewed landing. SpaceX has built significant hardware and conducted multiple Starship test flights, demonstrating progress in reusable rocket technology and orbital operations. However, several critical milestones remain incomplete, leaving NASA with uncertainty about the timeline for a safe and crewed ready mission why the contract is being reopened. Acting NASA Administrator Sean Duffy stated that while SpaceX remains, quote, an amazing company, it is still behind schedule. To protect Artemis 3's timelines, NASA plans to invite other companies, potentially including Blue Origin and others, to submit lander proposals. This step is intended to ensure that U.S. astronauts can return to the moon by 2028, even if SpaceX faces delays. Reopening the contract reflects NASA's desire to hedge risk while maintaining momentum in its human lunar exploration program. High stakes for SpaceX. This development carries major implications. Losing exclusive control over the lander contract could challenge SpaceX's current dominance in human space flight. The company has leveraged its Starship program, rapid launch cadence, and reusable booster technology to position itself as a leader in crewed orbital operations. Introducing competitors into the Artemis III program could reshape the competitive landscape and influence both government and commercial partnerships. What this means for the industry. The reopen contract is likely to accelerate competition, increasing cost efficiency, shortening timelines, and introducing alternative lunar lander architectures. NASA's approach signals a more diversified strategy, balancing risk while encouraging innovation. For the broader space industry, multiple contenders vying for the contract could push technology advancements and operational safety to a new level while keeping mission schedules on track. 
Looking into the future, SpaceX now faces a critical test of its ability to meet expectations under scrutiny and competition. The outcome of this reopened contract may determine not only the pace of U.S. lunar exploration, but also the structure of future commercial partnerships in deep space. NASA's decision underscores the agency's commitment to timely, safe, and innovative crew missions while sending a clear message, the moon awaits, but deadlines cannot be ignored. I think that that is just so, the hypocrisy is just outlandish, okay? Because NASA has been the just the agency that has stymied, that has just brought things just through the mud, that has just taken forever for everything. Doesn't matter what it is. Something that should take a year, NASA will take 10 years. It is just unbelievable to me. Once again, the hypocrisy is just outrageous. Absolutely outrageous. Now, do I believe that there should be competition when it comes to the lunar lander? Yeah, I do. Why? Because competition breeds innovation, not just iteration. That's my personal opinion. I've always said that, and I believe that to be true. So I think competition is good, but in my personal opinion, it just feels dirty. The timing is just, I don't know, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. It feels political to me, all right? Because remember, right now, China is going at this breakneck speed to get to the moon. Also, they're trying to develop the exact same type of reusability that Elon has. If you look at the stuff that they're working on, it's literally carbon copy. I swear to God, you can like stamp like a Falcon 9 to their rocket. You can stamp what they're doing with a Starship to the, everything that they're doing is literally just copy paste to what Elon Musk and SpaceX has been doing. That's what China does, and that's what they do well. They are copiers, okay? And if we allow this to happen, they are going to get to the moon before we do. Well, our second time to the moon. They are going to beat us in this new space race, getting to the moon. They're not gonna beat us with SpaceX Starlink. That's not gonna happen. Elon Musk already has about 8,500 satellites on orbit. They're not gonna catch up. Because once again, they need to have a Falcon 9 that's reusable, where they can have a booster be used 30 times and then finally put to pasture. Because that is true reusability. And Elon Musk SpaceX has already done it. They've proved it, it works, all right? And as we can see, Elon Musk SpaceX is putting a ton of time into Starship, a ton of energy and resource, not only to get to Mars, not only to put the SpaceX Starlink version threes on orbit, but also for Artemis three to meet their timeline. That's why we see in every one of the IFT recent launches, like IFT 11 that I just covered live the other day, we saw one of those engines relighting in orbit. All of the rest of the things that they've been doing not only in reusability, but on orbit refueling that they're going to move into now with their block three is once again also to get to Mars and get to the moon. So they have been doing a lot. And this is once again at breakneck speed. I don't know what company is going to be able to do that. Is there any company that can be even close to what SpaceX is as of right now in the next couple of years? Are they going to be able to put together this lunar lander in that period of time? If you give this to Lockheed, you give it to Bo, you give it to whoever, give it to Blue Origin over there, right? Do you think Bezos is gonna be able to do it? Probably not, probably not. He can't even get his own satellites on orbit. He has to use ULA. Think about that. <laughs> I mean, it's just, once again, the hypocrisy is just, in my personal opinion, it's unbelievable. I mean, I get it. This is probably going to help with budgeting, um, you know, maybe lower prices because there's going to be competition, maybe safety versus speed trade-off is a thing, you know, maybe that is something that they can say that is the reason for this, where SpaceX now loses that contract. You know, I just, I don't know. I don't know. You know, will there be like accelerated development in like alternative propulsion? 
because of this? You know, is there going to be more precise lunar lander created or maybe some type of autonomous lunar lander surface system that they put together because of this? I don't know. I just, I just find that this is just, once again, a odd timing in my personal opinion. And I think that they need to be cautious. And I'm gonna tell you why. The ultimate goal here is to get the US to the moon again before China, period. That is Artemis, Artemis three, Artemis four. That is the ultimate goal, all right? And if you're bringing on competition, what happens if you piss off Elon? Now, that is something to think about, isn't it? Think about that, right? How about if Elon says, hey, you know, you really kind of pissed me off. I'm not gonna take your astronauts to the ISS anymore. You can go and take a ride with Russia if you want to get up there. I'm also going to stop the Artemis completely, all right? You can use whoever you want, Lockheed, Boeing, you can try Jeff Bozo over there if you want and see if they can do something for you and see if you can actually have something for 2027, even 2028, all right? Give it a test, try. And I'm gonna put all of my apples, all of my resources into one basket and that basket is Mars and a little bit into SpaceX Starlink, of course, but that is secondary. Mars, forget about the moon, all right? And he could do that. He can absolutely do that. I don't know, guys. I don't know. The bottom line, like I said, is NASA has to really consider getting to the moon before China because the military is considering it. I think the push that we're seeing as of right now, getting to the moon like we did with JFK, is so important to remain a military superpower to the government that I don't think that they want to sacrifice or possibly put a fly in the ointment as they just did. But we'll see what ends up happening. What say you? What do you think about all this? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? What things do you think are good and what things do you think are bad? Because I do think that there is positivity, just like I said at the beginning. Bringing in competition once again creates Innovation, not just iteration. I've always said that. It is very important. Once again, competition breeds innovation and not just iteration. So that is a positive. But there is a ton of negatives here also. What say you? Down below. Once again, if you don't want to put anything down there, put an emoji. At least I know that you actually watch the video. I would appreciate that. Don't forget to thumbs up if you like the video. If not, thumbs down. YouTube likes it either way. <laughs> Anyways, guys, many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you guys.